This is Your Money, Your Call. and welcome to Your Money, Your Call. I'm Chris Gray. Now joining us on our panel of experts tonight is Jane Slack-Smith. Welcome to the show. Now, Jane, we were talking again before the break about um, kind of affordability or really trying to get some of your, uh, I guess, costs from the equity. One of the graphics we might pull up here is some of the ways that you can actually improve your borrowing capacity. So if you think that things are stretched, maybe your valuations are conservative, what can you do to try and increase your serviceability with the banks? So it's all about improving your borrowing capacity. So the first thing, as Peter mentioned, was getting rid of personal debt. And one of the biggest parts of personal debt is actually credit cards. So what you often find when a bank actually looks at the debt that you're currently carrying, for every $5,000 limit, so not balance, you could pay it off every month, but every $5,000 limit, they'll lend you $20,000 less. So it might seem a good idea to have $50,000 of backup credit cards, but in actual fact, it could affect your borrowing capacity by up to $200,000. Uh, the next thing is actually protecting your credit file. So mycreditfile.com.au is a service that you can go and access. And this is what the banks will access or anyone who you are going to lend money through, so be they for the dishwasher down the road or, or whatever. But uh, the banks will go here and they'll actually look at the inquiries that have been made on your credit file. So it's really important that you keep these clean. So I've seen circumstances where people have had, say, six inquiries by the one lender on their credit file for the one loan at different points of the loan. Subsequently, when we go to another lender that has credit scoring involved, they have a computer that does the credit scoring and they see six inquiries in the last one year and they consider that person to be a high-risk person. Or in actual fact, they only applied for one, one loan and it might just be a, a small refinance of a property for a new kitchen renovation. So actually knowing what's on your credit file and accessing that is, is, is paramount. I can't stress it enough, especially in, uh, I guess, post-GFC and the observance of uh, trying to be responsible lenders. The next thing is actually understanding how lenders do credit score. So they will look at someone of a certain age and they will make an assumption based on your income of the asset position you should be in. So if you spent the last 10 years holidaying overseas and living it up and you're on a really good income and you go to a lender and you actually ask them for money, they're going to look at things that have statistically shown them in the past has been risky lending, such as someone who moves a lot, someone who changes jobs a lot, someone who doesn't have the asset position that they should have for their age. So understand that some lenders will actually uh, restrict the amount of lending they will give you based on your credit score. The other thing is actually proving that you have some savings. It's no use going to a lender and actually saying to them, I would like some money, by the way, I haven't been able to save anything in the past. So you actually have to prove that you can save some money. Generally, that's about 5% genuine savings that they do expect. And, and actually renting and saying that you're then going to buy is actually a form of genuine savings, isn't it? It used to be. Most of the lenders right. changed the policy late last year that said, no, it's no longer. So, so you're better off staying with mum and dad. Absolutely. However, having said that, most of the lenders now uh, would attribute $650 a month if you do live with mum and dad, and even if they do send a letter in saying that you don't pay any rent, just in case you do have to move out in the future. So they do have a, an allocation for rent. Sounds good.